So we carry on with our explanation for chapter five, infrastructure, uh, railway infrastructure systems. And we have reached section six, where we are talking about railway alignment and railway alignment design. So this will be a very introductory uh, section on railway alignment, just to understand what's curves, what's gradients, and how you can design a route between two cities. So without further ado, let's have a look at the section content. So this is a railway alignment design and the contents that we'll be discussing, uh, what, what are the consideration that we consider in our design? What about curves? What are the minimum and maximum curvatures? And you need to revise the standards for that. What is the main design elements, grades and clearance that uh, you should be looking at? And what are the modeling and software uh, programs that you can use? So the main consideration and calculation, the shortest, for example, if I want to build a railway line between two cities, I will go with a straight line, line between points and A and B. But actually life is not that easy. So sometimes the line between A and B goes through difficult terrain and we call this topography. It might go through rivers, mountains, valleys, uh, strange uh, gradients, and cities uh, built uh, some construction sites or some uh, developed uh, cities or urban areas. So, or sometimes in, we might consider environmental aspects might be going through uh, uh, a, a reserve, uh, a, a, a park or a natural area or a naturally protected area or environmentally protected area. So, Based on all of these considerations, we need to think about them, but also we need to think about the train speed. Because the route curves and the route gradients affect the speed that our trains can go to. For example, if you are building a high speed railway line, and that high speed railway line would be going, would not actually exceed one to two percent gradients. If you are, uh, and by gradient, I mean that the elevation is not more than two meters every 100 meters or one meter every 100 meters. And if it's a curve, you would most probably not go lower than uh, 300 meters radius. And if it's a high speed railway line, you maybe you never go lower than 5,000 uh, meter radius. So a gradient, we talked about gradient and maximum gradient is 10%. And this is can be only in Switzerland. It's a 10% is a lot, like having 10 meters every like 100 meters is very, very high. That's difficult terrain. That's really difficult. So it's not like roads. Roads can do that, but I don't think railways can do this easily. So you need to avoid expensive excavation works and trying not to pass through water bonds and mountains as well. So this is about topography. Other consideration, you need to think about costs, the construction, the maintenance, the operation. How, for example, if you are building a metro system, would I, how I be digging a tunnel and what is the impact of the tunnel cross section on maintenance? Should I have a, a wide cross section or should I have a smaller cross section? Also, you should be thinking about uh, that, for example, excavation works. That's a, a this can be very, very expensive. So several critical design consideration. The first one is speed, type, volume of traffic. Then you need to think about space, environmental concerns, politics and land use issues, other economic criteria. So critical issues, you need to think about maximum curvature, which determines speed and vice versa. That's other aspects. We talked about this, that the curvature will determine the speed and the speed will affect the uh, train. But let me just stop here a little bit. So space consideration, you need to think about your, uh, your, uh, your right of way. And right of way is the, is the space where your uh, uh, railway tracks can go through. And right of way is an important concept and many, in many, it depends on the legislation you might need to buy lands. And some people would not like the railway to go through their lands. So if you have an agricultural land, don't think the owner would like you to go through that land. 
But if you have, for example, a, a, an urban an urban place, a small village or a small city, and some uh, some uh, some people would like the train station to be near their house or cl uh, close to their house. So there are different political issues and land issues that you need to consider, as well as environmental issues and space, and definitely other economic criteria. What's the income of the people that our uh, that our route is passing through? What is the population there and other uh, demographic aspects? You can also look at chapter one, which will help you in thinking a little bit more about railway alignment design. You can have the best, uh, best design based on demographics, but also you need to have the best design based on topography. So curves, let's think about curves. You have horizontal curves and you have vertical curves. And a curve is what is this small uh, circle and you have this spiral and this is the line. This is a line, this is a spiral and this is a circle. And I have seen that people are doing this in degrees line. But I am more familiar that people are actually are considering radius. I, am, I did not hear about people using like this curve has that degree, but in many times I was dealing with radiuses. But when I looked, I, I took these slides from an American presentation and it seems to be that they are using degrees, but I can't be 100% sure. So in this, you would look at the, this curvature, curvature of the uh, full circle and you would look at this degree and you would build a chord and this will be the degree, I guess. And anyway, you need to define either your degrees or your radius. And based on this value, you would determine the maximum radius you can go through and the minimum radius. And what I remember is a minimum radius of 300 meters and a maximum radius of 5,000 meters or uh, some high speed railway line would demand a radius of 5,000 uh, 5, meters. So the radius is five kilos. And when you when we think about vertical curves, it's the same. Uh, you need to think about what is the maximum of my vertical curve. Reverse curve should be avoided. You don't want to be a, a, a curve followed by another curve, especially if it's especially on the opposite direction. This will limit the speed for sure. So that's about curves. Let's talk about gradients. So in the primary railway lines, you would be thinking about a gradient from one to 3%, like one meter uh, going uphill one meter every 100 meters to three meters of every 100 meters. And the lower the better. In secondary rail, railway line, that does not go to a, a serious speed. You can go from six to 10%. And, but in general, the, the, high speed railway lines would demand something like 1% or less. Uh, I don't know about 10%, maybe only in Switzerland. Uh, maybe this is only in Switzerland. I don't know about, and they would be using a special kind of mechanism for uh, lifting the rail, the, the trains. I have seen those trains on mountains and 10% is not as easy. So you would be thinking about this percent. Super elevation can't also you need to consider this. The maximum speed that you can go on can't to experience the centrifugal force. And you have, a, you have an equation to calculate the maximum speed. Uh, maximum curvature. And you should be thinking about vertical clearance and horizontal clearance as well, as well as stationing. So this is basically some of the aspects about railway alignment design. What software you can use? You can use Civil 3D. You can use a rail track. You can use track X, I guess. Uh, but Civil 3D definitely, and you would build your railway line, and you might be able to, uh, to apply some of the available standards. So you might look at ARIMA standard, or, or you might look at British standard, or you might look at European standard, or the uh, UIC, uh, UIC standard, depending on the standard that you'll be working with, and depending where you are. And sometimes you even have, you can apply a GIS, a GIS model in your software. So you would be actually uh, have a reference of different points on that railway line, or on the software. So this is it for railway alignment design. I hope you enjoy it. We'll discuss tunnels and bridges in the next lecture. Uh, so this was uh, railway alignment design.
And this was a very quick introduction. You need to look at the standards. And you need to be familiar with the software. And maybe we'll have a course on using Civil 3D for building railway routes. Have a great evening and see you later.